Hello guys, so today we're going to be talking about uh, balanced equations, which is TEK 8.5F. Um, our goal is to recognize whether a chemical equation containing coefficients is balanced or not, and how that relates to the law of conservation of mass. So before we get started, we need to know what is the law of conservation of mass. So here's an image here. I want you to take a second and just um, look at it. All right, so we started with 100, gram, 100 grams of coal. The coal is completely burned, and the scale still says 100 grams in the end. What do you observe? Well, we should have observed that the beginning mass and the starting mass is exactly the same. And that is what the law of conservation of mass is. It states that mass is neither created nor destroyed in ordinary chemical and physical changes. It must start and end with the same amount. So here's an example. There's 30 kilograms of log plus one kilogram of fire, which is 31. Yields, which is what that arrow means. My pencil right here. It's right here, means yields or equals. 28 grams of ashes plus three grams of smoke, which is 31. So 31 is equal to 31. That is what the law of conservation of mass means. What I begin with is what I end with. So here is what this looks like in um, our science classrooms. So here you have CH4, methane, all right? And this consists of, I'm gonna erase this really quick, one carbon atom, and then it has a subscript of four, which we did in a previous lesson in Edgenuity. This indicates that I have four atoms of hydrogen. So I have one carbon, which is this black circle right here. And I have four hydrogen, which are these um, gray ones right here, plus two molecules of oxygen. This is a coefficient. I'm gonna put it in yellow. This indicates the number of molecules, while the subscript I'm gonna put right here in this navy blue indicates the number of atoms. Whenever you have a coefficient and a subscript, you have to multiply them. So two times two is going to be four atoms of oxygen. One, two, three, and four yields, which means equals, okay? CO2 plus two grams, I mean, two molecules of water, H2O, all right? So I'm gonna just erase this off the screen so that we can see what this means. I'm gonna draw a line down the middle. So I started with one carbon, four hydrogen, and four oxygen. And I ended with one carbon. This two is only applicable to the oxygen. So two oxygen. Now this two is for everything that is behind it. So I have two full molecules of H2O. So that means that I actually have H2O and I have another H2O, all right? So you can count them individually or you can um, distribute the two and multiply. So here I have two times two, which is gonna be four hydrogen. And then I have just two oxygen because there is no subscript right there, okay? So two oxygen, all right? So let's add everything up together. One carbon, one carbon, check, check. Two oxygen, four oxygen, I have two right here. So that's four and four and four hydrogen. I have the same amount, I have the same amount of atoms on each side. So this equation is actually going to be balanced. And I'm gonna do this a few more times. So don't worry about if you didn't catch it, I'm gonna do this again. So here's a common chemical equation. Uh, this is photosynthesis, um, which we, uh, we, I think we learned this in sixth grade. Oh, um, plants use carbon dioxide and water to make energy. All right, glucose and oxygen, it yields glucose and oxygen. Um, let's look at this equation and talk about some significant parts. All right. This are, these are the reactants. The reactants, um, these are substances that take that takes part in the in the chemical uh, reaction and it undergoes a change during the reaction. 
So pretty much this would be my peanut butter and jelly. And it's going to make a sandwich. Okay, so the reactants are the ingredients. And then my arrow, of course, mean yields or equals. And then these are my products. So in photosynthesis, it uses six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, H2O, and it's going to make or yield glucose and six molecules of O2. All right. So the products are the substances that are formed. And you can see this a different way, too. So you can also see it with the arrow going this way. This would be the reactants. And these would be the products. So pay attention to which way your arrow is going. Your arrow shows you what you're making, which is your product or which are your products. All right. Reactants yields products. So subscript coefficient and formula. These are all very important parts of a chemical equation. The subscript right here in red tells you how many atoms. The coefficient is in green and it tells me the number of molecules. This is the same thing as saying this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can add them all up to 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, or you can multiply 6 times 2 and get 12. Okay? And then the formula is um, H2O, CO2 would be a formula, O2, and then C6H12O6 as well. All right, so very important parts reactants, products, subscript, coefficient, the formula, and then yields or equals, which shows us the reactants and the products. So let's do some counting atoms uh, practice. Here we have the name of a compound. All right, here's our names, common names. And here is the chemical formula. So we learned, or well, we should have learned, actually, because we're out of school, but we should have learned about um, the um, elements on the periodic table. So all of these should look very familiar. And we also counted atoms already in a previous lesson. So let's do some basic counting. So the first one that we're, we're going to do is sodium chloride or table salt. And it's right here, NaCl. I only have one atom of sodium. There's no subscripts and no coefficients. And I have one atom of chlorine. Notice that this is not a capital L and there's no element on the periodic table that is only L. There is lithium, which is Li. So that is sodium. Let me rewrite it a little bit up higher. And that is chlorine. Let's look at the second one. Here we also have no coefficients, but we do have subscripts. So we have 12 carbon, we have 22 hydrogen, and we have 11 oxygen. Okay. For vinegar, the same thing. We have no coefficient, but let's put one there just to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's say I have a coefficient of three. That three belongs to everything behind it, okay? So now I have to multiply each subscript by the coefficient. So now I have six carbon. I have nine, hi nine hydrogen. And I have six oxygen. Three times two, three times three, and three times two. The subscript only belongs to the element that it is directly behind. And then our last one here, baking soda. I have one sodium. I have one hydrogen. I have one carbon. And I have three oxygen. Okay, because the, the subscript of three only belongs to the element that it is directly behind. All right. So here we have a coefficient and a subscript. I'm going to distribute the six, so I'm going to do six times two, which gives me 12 um, atoms of hydrogen. Or you can also do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and add them up. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Same thing. Okay? So remember that the coefficient belongs to everything that is um, behind it. So let's say I had um, this behind it. Then that 6 belongs to all of these. So now I have, I still have my 12 hydrogen. I have 6 carbon and 6 oxygen. Okay? So the coefficient belongs to everything behind it. All right. Balanced or unbalanced? Does it follow the law of conservation of mass? So remember, when we first taught, when we first started the video, we said that the law of conservation of mass means did I end with the same amount of a substance that I began with? Okay? So let's look at some chemical um, equations and let's see are they the same on each side. So first we need to identify our reactants and our products. And our arrow tells us that. All right, the arrow is pointing towards the product. So these are the products. This is what we're making. And here are the reactants. Okay. All right. So let's start counting. So one thing that I that I noticed right away is that we do have coefficients and subscripts and that the plus signs, I want you to think of them as stop signs. So this two only belongs here, only belongs to this chemical formula. It does not belong to the oxygen. The plus sign is like a stop sign. This seven only belongs to O2. This four only belongs to CO2. And this six only belongs to H2O. So let's start counting. Our first And it's so six times two. So six times two times three and four. For hydrogen, I have a coefficient of three and a substance of six. Two times six is going to give me twelve. And now my plus sign means to stop. I'm going to go to my next chemical formula, which is oxygen. So for oxygen, I have a seven coefficient and a two substance, which gives me fourteen. So these are the um, amount of each atom that I have on my reactant side. To determine if it's balanced, let's see what we have on the product side. So for carbon, I only have four. There's no subscript. So four times one would just be one, would just be four, I'm sorry. All right, so if there's not a subscript there, you can easily put a one. And that'll um, help you to remember that it's four times one, which is just four. Okay, so here's oxygen. I still have the uh, coefficient of four, and I have a subscript of two, so that's gonna be eight. My stop sign, my plus sign. Okay, and let's go to the next one. So I have hydrogen. I have a coefficient of six and a subscript of two, which gives me 12. And then I have some more hydrogen left here. So my, uh, I mean, some more oxygen left here. My oxygen um, is only six because I only have the coefficient, okay? So now we need to add those two together to get the total number of oxygen. Oxygen is equal to 14. So now let's see if we have the same thing on each side. I have four carbon and four carbon. I have 12 hydrogen and 12 hydrogen. I have 14 oxygen and 14 oxygen. This equation is balanced. It follows the law of conservation of mass. What I began Okay. Let's do number two. Let's first identify our reactants and products. Here is our yield sign indicating that I am making um, the item, the elements, or not the elements, but the um, the uh, molecules that are on the right hand side. So here are the here are the reactants. What I'm utilizing, what's going to be changed, and here are the products. What I'm making. So now let's see if this equation follows the law of conservation of mass. 
Now this one also has some um, parentheses in there. And um, I did see if I did see this in Edgenuity. So I'll talk you through how to um, calculate with the parentheses here in a second. So here's iron. And I have two of those. There's no coefficient. Here's oxygen. I have three of those. There's my stop sign. Now I have my first coefficient that I'm going to distribute. Here's hydrogen. I have three times two, which gives me six. Here's sulfur. I only have three as there is no subscript. And then I have some more oxygen, which is three times four to give me 12, giving me a total number of 15 oxygen. Okay, so I went ahead and combined those already. All right, let's move to our products. So for iron, there's no coefficient. There's gonna be two. Now, whenever you have a parentheses, the subscript that is outside of it belongs to everything inside. So that means that this becomes three. And since there's already a three with oxygen, you multiply. So sulfur, it does not have a coefficient. It does not have its own subscript, but it has the three from the parentheses. Notice that it only belongs to SO4, not iron, because iron is not in the parentheses. So sulfur is three. And then oxygen, I have four times three because I have a subscript and I have a subscript right outside of the parentheses, so I have 12. My plus sign means stop, so I'm gonna carry over to here. I do not carry any of those other numbers over to this one. There's no coefficient anyway for the uh, um, iron sulfate. So let's go to H2O. So for hydrogen, I have a three coefficient and a two for the subscript, which gives me six. And then for oxygen here, I only have a coefficient, which gives me three. All right, and we have to add those oxygen together, which gives me 15. And now we can check. Iron, two and two. Sulfur, three and three. Hydrogen, six and six. And oxygen, 15 and 15. So this equation is also balanced. It follows the law of conservation of mass because I have the same number of atoms of each type on both sides. Okay, let's see. All right, guys, so here's just um, some questions that I thought would be some great practice um, if you need additional practice. So here are two questions, and they both are asking the same thing. Which of the following chemical equations are balanced? So here I'm going to be doing some um, checking for the law of conservation of mass. So I'm going to be writing and erasing. So feel free to pause the video, work them out, and then let the video play or skip ahead to see if you actually got them right. So for number one, I have my, um, let me do my table. So here are my reactants. And here are gonna be my products. All right, so we know our arrow is showing us where the reactants and the products are. So let's get started. I have one aluminum, there's no coefficient. I have one copper which is Cu, there's no coefficient and no subscript. And I have two chlorine, as chlorine has a subscript of two. On my product side, I have one aluminum. Chlorine here has a subscript of three. So I have three chlorine. And then I only have one copper. Now let's see, does it follow the law of conservation of mass? One aluminum, one aluminum, one copper, one copper two chlorine, three chlorine, so it does not. So answer choice A is not correct. I'm gonna erase my um, elements and counting here. And let's do B. 
I have two aluminum. I have three copper because of that coefficient. And I have six chlorine because I have a three coefficient and a two, two subscript. That's going to be six chlorine atoms. And now we're going to go to our product side. I have two aluminum. I have six chlorine because I have a coefficient of two and a subscript of three. All right. So six chlorine. And I have three copper. So let's see if it follows the law of conservation of mass. Two aluminum, two aluminum, three copper, three copper, and six chlorine and six chlorine. So answer choice B is the correct answer. But since we're practicing, we can go ahead and do them all and get some good practice with counting. Okay, so let's look at C and D just for fun. I have three aluminum, I have two copper, and I have four chlorine. Two times two is four. That subscript of two for chlorine, I have to multiply it by the coefficient. And then I have three aluminum. I have nine chlorine because I have a coefficient of three and a subscript of three. And I have two copper. So we can easily see that it's not going to work with the chlorine. So answer choice C would be incorrect. I'm going to erase. I'll keep doing that. Okay. Let's look at D. I have four alumina. I'm writing in yellow. Sorry. Okay. I have four aluminum. I have three copper. And I have six chlorine. On my product side, I have four aluminum. I have a coefficient of four and a subscript of three for chlorine. Four times three is going to be 12. And then I have three copper. So again, on the chlorine, Six is not equivalent to 12, so answer choice D is not correct. All right, I'm going to erase and let's move down to question number two. So we're looking for the same thing. We're looking for which chemical equation is balanced. Which one follows the law of conservation of mass? Let's start with A. I have three potassium, K. I have one phosphorus. I have four oxygen. I have two hydrogen and I have two chlorine. Remember that this two belongs to everything behind it. For the product side, I have two potassium. I have two chlorine because of that coefficient. I have six hydrogen because I have two times three. I have two phosphorus because of that coefficient of two belongs to everything behind it. And I have eight oxygen. All right, so we can easily see the first element is not equivalent. Okay, so we know that A is incorrect. Let's move on to B. All right, so for B, I have three potassium, and I'll write it in red to be consistent, <laughs> three potassium. I have one phosphorus, I have four oxygen, three hydrogen, and three chlorine. And on the product side, I have one potassium, Okay, there's no coefficient there, no subscript. I have one chlorine. I have three hydrogen. I have one phosphorus. There's no coefficient. And I have four oxygen because of that subscript. Not balanced. And we can, we can quickly identify that because this and this. So sometimes that you can quickly see that... Um, the first element is off, there's no need to continue. And we're practicing, so I'm going all the way through with you. All right, so answer choice B is wrong. Let's move on to C. 
C is the same thing. Three potassium, one potassium. I already know that that answer choice is wrong. Doesn't matter how far I go. I know that it's wrong, but let's double check it anyway. Three potassium, one phosphorus, four oxygen, one hydrogen, one chlorine, one potassium right there. One chlorine, three hydrogen, one phosphorus, and four oxygen. All right, so two of our elements didn't quite make it hydrogen and potassium, which means that our correct answer choice has to be D. So I have three potassium, one phosphorus, four oxygen, three hydrogen, and three chlorine. Remember, this three belongs to everything behind it. That yield sign is a stop sign, just like the plus sign. The three does not go past that. On the product side, I have three potassium. I have three chlorine. I have three hydrogen because of that subscript. I have one phosphorus and I have four oxygen. So the correct answer is D. Thank you for watching, guys.